Hey everyone, this is uh, Pastor Carlos. Uh, today's August the 1st. It's about 11 o'clock in the morning. And I uh, just wanted to send you a little message and an update on the service tomorrow and talk about a couple other things. The first thing I'd like to let you know is that uh, tomorrow we will be putting chairs out in the courtyard um, under the tree for some shade, as well as turn on the sound out there. Uh, for those of you who would like to worship in an uh, environment that you feel safe uh, to worship uh, due to COVID. Um, we will also be printing the music. Jennifer is going to print that and put that outside so you can also sing along. Um, and we'll do that as long as necessary. We know some of you haven't gathered because you don't want to be in an enclosed space. And so this is a way in which you can uh, still worship, be outside, and keep your distance from others uh, for safety concerns. Um, we are also going to start tomorrow uh, tomorrow's the first Sunday, so we're going to have communion, but uh, actually we're going to start communion uh, and have it every Sunday uh, after the sermon like we usually do. And one of the reasons uh, we've decided to switch from just once a month to every Sunday is because of what we read in the New Testament in regards to the early church. Uh, Luke writes for us that they were devoted to the apostles' teaching, that they were devoted to the fellowship and they were devoted to the breaking of bread, which we believe to be a mention of communion as well as to prayer. And usually we're pretty good at three of those. We're good at being devoted to the apostles' teaching, the Word of God. We preach and listen to the Word of God every Sunday. We're devoted to the fellowship, sharing our common faith in the Lord and being together as we gather. Uh, and even in this church, we've striven to be even more devoted to prayer, uh, where we even have a corporate prayer time along with the other prayers we have on Sunday. But usually the one that gets left aside is the breaking of bread. Now Luke mentions that because in the first century they had a meal around uh, communion where they would celebrate the Lord's table. and um, But we only usually, we do that once a month. And so uh, as we've been discussing this among the elders and uh, I have, uh, we've talked about this is that if we're going to be devoted to the breaking of bread, which is communion, then why don't we do that every week? And so for the next two months, for August and September, we're going to kind of have like a trial period of what it's like for us to worship that way, to have communion every Sunday. It will be a little different, uh, but the concerns usually that are cited that communion would be just too familiar and we want to keep it special, which is why we don't do it uh, every Sunday, uh, as well as the other concern that, you know, that's what Roman Catholics do. We're not Roman Catholics, so why are we going to do that? And I like to address those. And uh, Obviously, if you have any more concerns, you're free to talk to us about that. But the concern that it would become too familiar, I believe, is unfounded. Uh, we preach every Sunday. Uh, we pray every Sunday. We have fellowship every Sunday. Um, why not have communion every Sunday? Uh, preaching doesn't get old. Fellowship doesn't get old. Prayer doesn't get old. Uh, when we think about what communion is, the Lord's table, it is a visual and tangible picture of the gospel where we remember that Jesus condescended to earth, became a man, lived among us, lived like one of us, and then died the death we deserve when we take the cup. If that ever becomes too familiar for us, then we need to check our spiritual pulse and say why. Uh, that should always move us to worship, and that should always uh, lead us to humility and gratitude for all that Jesus has done for us on the cross. Uh, so if it's with that mindset that we approach communion, it's not going to become too familiar. And by the way, the church I came from in Iowa, we did this for many years, and it was never too familiar. One of the ways that uh, we are going to try to keep it fresh is that we will have different men here in the church lead communion, uh, which I think gives it uh, that gives us that opportunity to hear from different perspectives uh, on the same truth. So uh, being too familiar, we can still keep it special. Being too familiar, I don't think is going to happen. Secondly, might be the concern or the question is, well, you know, that's what the Roman Catholics do. They have communion every Sunday or what they call the Eucharist. And my response to that is, is that the biblical view of communion, which we hold to here at Valley Bible Church, is vastly different than the Roman Catholic view of communion or what they call the Eucharist. In the Roman Catholic view, uh, as, they, uh, as the priest blesses the elements, uh, they literally say that, that the priest reaches spiritually into heaven brings Jesus down and places him on the altar to sacrifice him once again for the sins of the people. And therefore, 
when he does that, the, the wine and the bread become the literal body of Jesus. Um, and then the participants take into themselves um, Jesus. In other words, they're taking the grace of Jesus into themselves when they take communion and therefore um, somehow uh, help them. And, and they'll even reference to this in funerals that they have taken partaken of the Eucharist and that how somehow helps them in their salvation. Uh, that is not biblical and that's not what we will do. And that is, we've never done that here at Valley Bible Church. Um, we believe it's a visual and tangible picture of the gospel, and uh, it is to remind us to be centered on Jesus, to be Jesus-centered, which is why we put it after the sermon. After every sermon, we should be cross, cross and Jesus-centered, and as a response to what we've heard from the Word of God, uh, the gospel is always the best response. Uh, also, too, during this, um, you know, uh, COVID concerns and, and what's going on, uh, with with the virus, uh, we want to maybe caution you from being too comfortable with not gathering together as the church. And um, I realize some of you do that for safety concerns, and that's legitimate. Uh, uh, but we can become so f comfortable that we don't gather together at the same time on Sundays as you gather online during the uh, live stream. Encourage you to at least do that. And obviously, if you, if you feel safe to gather here in person at the church, and now that we have the opportunity for you to gather outside and still be here and, and be devoted to the gathering, uh, God commands us to do that as well uh, for his honor, as well as for our good. It is good for us to gather, to be encouraged, strengthened, and to worship together. Um, lastly, I'll say this. Uh, I am so grateful for the support that the church continues to give uh, to the ministry here in your giving. God is taking care of our needs, and we're so thankful. Uh, if you uh, forget to, to do that, now you can still mail that in, or you can drop that off in the mail, drop it in the mail slot at the church, uh, or as you come and gather on Sundays, you can give that. Um, so grateful for your your faithfulness in that, and just wanted to say thank you. Uh, oh yeah, and I wanted to add, we are at the two week marker from where we were exposed. Uh, or potentially exposed to COVID, we had two people, and then later three uh, test positive from that were in the service two Sundays ago. Today is day 14, so we're in the we're in the clear. We're in the we're safe. So if you were staying away because you didn't want to, you wanted to quarantine, you are now free to return tomorrow. Uh, so Lord willing, we'll see you in the morning, uh, either online or here in person or on the courtyard. And as we begin John chapter 11, I'm very excited and to begin this the account of the raising of Lazarus. And tomorrow we're going to look at the confidence of Jesus before he did that. And it's going to be a great time. I'm looking forward to spending some time in the Word of God with you as well as worshiping through song and prayer and fellowship. May God richly bless you. If you have any questions, please send that to one of the elders or myself, and we'd be happy to address those. Have a great day.